Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar event. My name is Joshua. I will be your presenter today. It is promptly 12 p.m. <clears throat> Eastern time here on this Friday. Um, uh, before we get started, just a couple few things, technical things. Um, <clears throat> I'm uh, fighting a cold here, folks, so you'll have to forgive me. Uh, my voice is a little raspy, and I'll try to do my best to make sure that I remain as articulate as I can for you. Um, but I may kind of come in and out here. Uh, periodically, I apologize for that, um, but we'll try to work our way through it. We're here until 1220 Eastern Time talking about uh, paying bills in Church Windows Accounting. If you have questions, please type those into the questions portion or pane of the webinar control panel. I'll do my best to keep an eye on that, <clears throat> on those questions, um, see what we can't do to get those answered. I'll, I'm good at repeating the questions for everyone so they understand what's being asked. Uh, I may put off calls, you know, a question to support, uh, simply because if it's a specific question about your data or how your system is set up, uh, I probably can't answer that through the webinar here. Um, but um, certainly, you know, we're happy to try to answer your questions you have through Church Windows support as well. Um, if you click the little red arrow on the sidebar of your webinar control panel there, it minimizes that pain, gets it out of the way. This is particularly important if you have a single monitor or if you've got a dual monitor set up, you can just drag that out to the second desktop um, and, uh, and again, get the full visual effect of the presentation. Finally, um, we are the topic of today's webinar is taken from our A103 workbook pages 27 to 33. If you do not have the workbooks, you're certainly welcome to purchase those from our website. If we go up here to churchwindows.com, go to beginning, we see here in our menu the training workbooks. They're certainly not required, but we do try to keep uh, the webinars in line or in keeping with our webinar or our workbooks as much as we possibly can. Just kind of helps kind of paint the whole picture of how Church Windows works for folks. Uh, you can just order those and download the PDFs online if you wish. We find that folks find those very, very helpful. Okay? Uh, the, today's event is being recorded, and we will put it out on the Support Center page on our website here within the next week or 10 days, so you'll be able to revisit this. Okay? Uh, we do, that's where our Support Center data or information and, and events and videos all come from are these particular live webinar events. Uh, and we just put those out there for folks to use and revisit it again and again. All right, so we're here to talk about pay bills in Church Windows Accounting. Okay, so what we're talking about here is when we're in our accounting module, we've got our enter bills um, option right here, and then we've got our pay bills, okay? These are two completely different or separate transactions in Church Windows, and we're only here to talk about the one, uh, the second of the two, the pay bills process, okay? Church Windows is, for all intents and purposes, a payable or an accrual accounting system, okay? So the assumption that we're beginning with here is we have already entered some bills, you know, debited the expenses and moved those balances into those vendors that then need to be turned around and be paid, okay? All right, so... That's where we are. We're not going to be going through the enter bills process today. We're just going to be going talking about the second of the two transactions, the paying of the bills, okay? So when we go to pay bills, and you can access it by going up to transactions here in the upper left and pay bills here in the middle too, or in the upper left, okay? So there's a lot of options at this window here. Uh, for to determining how and which bills we want to pay, okay? Typically, folks will go up to this Select Vendor Payee pay to Pay menu and choose a particular vendor, which you can certainly do, okay? But we're going to be talking about these other options here under Quick Pay right up here in the upper right. Let me highlight that right here, Quick Pay, all right? I'm, I'm always kind of surprised when I'm on my support calls at how much folks don't use this function, okay? When we click on Quick Pay, it looks like it's a button, but it's actually a menu. And so when we click on that, notice it brings up three different options. Bills enter today, view vendors with the balance, 
and view outstanding bills. And we're going to spend a little time on each one of those, okay? So if we choose bills entered today, now I did prepare as part of my setup for today's event, did go in and enter some bills, but basically if you entered and posted bills yesterday, okay, or the day before, anything but today, then this is not going to work for you, okay? And what I mean by today is I actually posted the computer, posted them while sitting at the computer on March 15th, 2019, okay? That's the only way that that's going to work, all right? So if I click on Quick Pay and View Bills Entered Today, it's now going to pop in with the four bills that I entered earlier before I started. So what that means is, okay, let's say I entered the bills and posted those in the morning, and I went to lunch, and I came back and then now wanted to pay them. That means I don't have to sit there. I just don't have to leave the Church Windows program open or don't have to choose Post and Pay These Bills and leave it sitting on the screen. That means I can close all the way entirely out of church windows and um, come back in and choose that, and it'll bring up all the bills that I entered earlier in the day. Okay, And by today, I mean, again, my CPU clock is, my computer clock is, you know, midnight of March 15th to 11.59 tonight. Okay? So that's why that works. Okay? All right, so we're going to discard this batch, and we're going to come back in here again. If we go back into Pay Bills, and we do Quick Pay and View Vendors with a Balance, this is going to bring up any liability, and what I mean by liability, anything that falls under our liability accounts on our balance sheet, which includes any 200 accounts here, as we clearly see, you know, in parentheses, you know, 941 taxes payable, you know, county and local taxes, disaster relief, pass-through monies, anything that's deducted from payroll, as well as my regular vendors, okay? Vendors are still categorized as liabilities, too. They just don't have account numbers. They are sub-accounts of my ledger 200 account on my balance sheet called accounts payable, okay? But they are all still grouped or categorized in the accounts on our balance sheet called liabilities, monies that the church owes, essentially, okay? So, and why this is important is because not all of the bills that I need to pay or not all of the balances that I need to pay to a particular vendor or liability or payee are necessarily generated through the transaction called bill, okay? And this is, like, true for things like our say here are 941 taxes or, you know, our flex spending or our disaster relief. Some of these monies may be credited into these accounts from something like donations. The money is just passing through the church's accounts. I don't want to show it as a, you know, a bill on my treasurer's report, but I need to pay, post a payment to, you know, American Red Cross or CropWalk or whomever. Or for my payroll taxes, you know, I want to, those come right out of payroll and are transferred into accounting from the payroll module. There is no bill that's needed. These balances are simply sitting here waiting for me to pay. So, these bills enter today or view outstanding bills, as we're going to see here in just a couple minutes, or in another minute, some of those aren't going to show there because, again, they are just vendors or liabilities with a balance. They're not recorded through a bill, okay? Uh, so when I want to say, okay, I'm ready to pay my 941 taxes or something, I would go put a check mark there, um, and I would simply click Create Payments. And again, notice it doesn't populate with an amount to pay. There is no bill to associate with that. Therefore, it doesn't presume to know how much I want to pay. I have to literally click in the amount to pay and type in how much I want to pay, okay? Yeah, and see, that's what that on page 28 of our workbook page is there. It shows how anything that's just a vendor and not as a result of something like a bill, it just puts a zero under amount, pay. It's waiting for, amount to pay. It's waiting for me to enter how much I want on my payment, okay? If we now go back up to quick pay and view outstanding bills, here we are now back to seeing our five bills that we had posted earlier um, for my 
you know, posted earlier in the day that are waiting here to print so I, or to post. I can now choose which one of these bills I want to pay if I wish, if I don't want to pay them all. Okay? It's entirely up to me. I simply put a check mark in the select box. And notice here, I want to point this out, is notice here I've got two to AT&T, you know, one bill for $61.98 and another one for $125. They are two separate bills, hence why they were showing up on separate lines. So if, say, I don't want to pay both those bills to AT&T, I can put a check mark next to one and create my payment, and it will only check that one bill is paid. So notice right here, when I click under AT&T, when I've added those there, I've got the two different bills, the 6198 and the 125, but only one for 6198 is checked. Okay. So I'm basically saying I only want to pay that one today. I want to leave the telephone bill to be paid a different day. Okay. You have, if they're entered as separate bills, you literally have the full control to decide which one of those bills you want to pay or which ones you don't. Okay. There's a lot of flexibility here, folks. Okay. Um, the... So if, let's say, I went and had gone into the internal revenue, you know, into my 941 and payroll and said, okay, my amount that I'm wanting on my check is going to be $1,234.56, okay? Um, I've now keyed that amount in. That's how much my payment's going to be, okay? Um, it, to complete these payments, okay, I then have to post them. But before we do that, there's a few things I want to talk about. Okay. Notice here, 315 is the date occurred on the left-hand side because, again, that's the date that's on my computer. Okay. So March 15th, it doesn't matter the date of the bill, that's the date that it's wanting to put in there because that's the date on my computer. However, if I want to, I can change the date on any one of these payment transactions. So if I go, oh, I want them all to be next Monday, I can just come in here under default date occurred and just change that and notice it changes it to March 18th for all of them. Or I can click under any one of them and just change the date occurred to for that particular line item. Okay, as I said, you have an enormous amount of control here. Okay, if say my internal revenue payroll taxes payment is not paid out of my Huntington Bank checking account, I can click here and I can go, okay, I'm going to have pay that out of my fifth third savings account. Okay? You can always click under the amount to pay and change the amount to pay for any of these transactions, regardless of the account balance or the amount of your bill. Okay? I go, oh yeah, my uh, city florist bill is paid electronically. I can just click under the payment method for that, you know, while it defaults to computer check. You know, I've got it set up as today's default date occurred, the default asset is my checking account, and my default payment method is computer check. I can change the payment method for any one single line item in this list and change it to its own particular payment method. What that means is, essentially, is I don't have to come in here and do my computer checks first and then come back in and post my EFT payment separately. Okay? Full control. Okay? So that's what it's talking about at the middle or bottom of page 30 is completing the payment, recording your asset account, your payment method, and, you know, payment method, and then subsequently comments, okay? If I wish to pay a specific single vendor, certainly I can go right up here to the upper left, and I can, you know, type in that particular vendor. And what's important to understand here is that it does show me my, um, it does show you the account balance right here. Okay, so if you've got a balance, zero balance in a vendor account, you can still pay it. Okay, so if I go, oh, I've got a bill to, you know, Alex's plumbing for an emergency that I need to pay, I can still put it in here and go, okay, Alex wants a $500 upfront check to begin work. I can do that. Okay, all it does 
is means that I'm paying a balance from a vendor that has no balance in it. It's going to make Alex's plumbing a negative balance temporarily until I either receive an invoice from them. You know, then I can go and enter my bill. But again, there's no requirement in the software to have a balance in a vendor account in order to complete a payment for them. Okay. And on page 31, it talks about our comments. So, you know, again, because I've got most of these selected as computer checks here, of course, I don't enter the check number here. I'll enter that check when I do my, my check printing, which will occur after I've posted the payments. But if, say, I want to come in here under my EFT transaction and put in a number or something or an EFT transaction number in here, sure, I can do that. Okay? Finally, on these here transaction comments, this is really, really important that's to understand about this, is notice that down here that little asterisk is a, pointing us to a footnote. So it says here, comments will appear on check stubs, use in INS or to insert comments from bills. So this is very important to understand is that until I go to my INS and I append the comments from my bill into my payment, those comments don't automatically copy from the bill into the payment. Okay? So notice here, if I click under my AEP, notice here I've got electric bill 2019. I can do append bill comment, pay, append payment comments. So I've now put those payment bill comments into my payment. There is no option to automatically copy the bill comments into the payment. You have to use this INS function. Okay? or insert, essentially, is what that means. OK? Um, if I don't want to pay a particular vendor, I go, oh, I didn't mean to pay my taxes. No, I'm going to leave that. We're going to say I don't, didn't mean to pay my, um, you know, my uh, city florist bill, say. Highlight that entry. Down here in the bottom left, click the button that says, do not pay selected vendor. OK? Down there. All right, so now when I click on that, it pops up and says, are you sure you don't want to pay City Florist at this time? I click yes. Boom, it removes that from the list of my payments. Okay? Finally, computer check right here. Notice here I've got at and I've got my two bills. Okay, I want to just kind of talk about this because um, it's important. It's an important function as part of the pay bills process. I have my two invoices, 6198 and 125. Well, let's say I've got those two bills and I want two separate payments, two separate checks to AT&T for that. Okay? I check both of the bills. They have to be recorded as separate bills. And I would put a check mark over here in the far right where it says separate payment. See that? Right here. If I put check marks in those separate payments boxes, I'm telling the system that I want to print two separate checks for AT&T. Okay? Now, this is the most important part about this. This only works for computer checks. If I am paying them using another payment method like EFT or manual checks, this separate payment function isn't going to work. Okay? So that's just an important note to make for yourself about that. Okay? If I did have two bills and I did have or two payments, and they were manual checks or something like that. Um, I would have to, you know, uncheck the first invoice, record its manual check, you know, choose manual check as the payment method for that, enter its check number, post. Okay. Then come back in here and go up to view outstanding bills, check the next bill, choose manual check, enter its check. Okay. So the separate payment function only works for computer checks. All right. When you're ready, folks, you then would simply click the post or post and print checks. All right. And then then what it'll do is it'll open up your pay bills or your uh, it'll prompt if you want to print the report of the payment transactions. All right. It says, do I want to print? So I say yes, and it'll open up my report of just my payment posting transactions. So when I click print, it's just a... It's not the actual check printing screen. It's the actual report of my pay, payment transactions. I would print that for hard copy purposes. 
or export it, then when I cancel out of it, it should then automatically open up my, uh, there it is. Um, Oh, and I, the reason why it's showing fifth, third, third savings is because I chose one of them out of that account. Here's my Huntington Bank checking, and here are the checks waiting to print for those other three payments. Okay? All right. It's 1220. Let's see what questions we've got here. Um, my payments are posting back to the original invoice date. They really should be posting to the cash transaction on the date on the date of the check. The expense should post by the invoice date, and the payment should post according to the check date. What should I be doing different? Uh, Tina, I'm sorry. I'm not sure. I'm understanding that. That's an awful lot in that question. Uh, I mean, what I would be make sure that you're doing is that, you know, enter your bill with the date that you're wanting the expense to show up on your treasurer's report, but when you get to pay bills, um, just make sure that the date occurred on your payment transaction matches the date that you're wanting it to show up as affecting as coming out of your vendor and coming out of cash. Uh, again, you can always control what that is. So I just think you need to be paying attention to the dates both when you're entering the bill and the date occurred when you're paying the bill. If that's not it and you have more questions, call me about it. 800-533-5227. James, how do you handle the return vendor uncashed check? Well, James, that's not really a topic for today. Um, uh, basically, it would probably be either, depending on the date of the check, it would be either reversing the original bill and payment, or we'd be posting and adjusting an entry. That's either, again, another topic for another webinar, or please call us into support. We'll be happy to talk about that with you. Uh, another question. You asked that these bills be paid on 318. However, when you went to print the check, shows 315. Yes, that's true. Um, yeah, again, Diane, by default, typically the system's always going to put whatever the computer date is on here until I change those. So sure, if I want my date on my checks to be, you know, next week, I can just choose that. Go up here and choose date on check and make that 318, and then my date on the check is what I want. But by default, church windows typically will default to the date on the computer. Now, I think that's not true if you go to start to enter bills, and whatever date you enter for the bill and you do post and pay these bills, it will default to the date occurred that you entered when you did the enter bill enter process. But otherwise, if you close out of it and come back in and choose one of the quick pay options, it will default to the computer date. Yeah, again, Diane, if that's not what you're experiencing in the software, please call support. You know, based on your version, it could be a bug or something in the software. You know, saw Church Windows has bugs like everything else. So, you know, this could be a version issue, something like that. All right, I don't see any other questions coming in. Uh, we've run a little long here. Maybe folks are still typing something in. I'll give them a, a little bit here. Um, maybe somebody's typing something in. No, it doesn't appear to be. Okay. Well, again, folks, this will be, um, you're welcome, Barbara. Thank you. Uh, this will be out on the website again sometime in the next week or 10 days. Uh, please, you know, we put these all out here for for folks to revisit later. Um, just keep checking the support center page. At some point, you'll see the pay bills uh, video out there. Okay. All right. I'll go ahead and end the webinar for everybody. Thank you. We hope to see everybody at a future Church Windows webinar event. And have a great weekend. Thank you all. Bye-bye.